this video we'll be going over buffer batteries and why you should utilize them. One of the main reasons being that if your source of power, say your solar panel or your windmill is destroyed, then one battery will keep continue to run and after it dies then the next battery in the circuit will take over making it a buffer battery. So the first circuit that I'm going to show you is for small batteries and um, it's very cheap you can see on the top right the full circuit you can see in the bottom left me wiring it up you can see in the bottom right um, all the components that you will need to um, complete the circuit and then right above the components is the crafting cost and then all of the names of everything is at the top of the screen that you'll need and the amount of them that you will need if you can't see it in the bottom right so um, basically you're just going to wire up your solar panels to the root combiner and that's what we're currently doing. Um, but one of the main reasons that I suggest you use buffer batteries is, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, and also because it allows for a more stable power. Uh, it allows for more control of the circuit later on. And if you don't know a whole lot about electricity and rust, then um, this video series I got coming out, you'll learn quite a bit about it. And then you'll start to realize why a buffer battery is a more reliable option than just straight up wiring it to the external power source. Um, this way you know they can charge while working at the same time giving you the same number every single time but I'll go into that in a different video of why this is the best option in my opinion of course it's just my opinion if you don't want it to be this complicated it doesn't have to be because this part right here after you wire the batteries up to the blockers you have to wire the right side of each electrical branch branch to the opposite blocker so you're just blocking the pass through with the right side of the opposite electrical branch. Nothing too crazy, but this is what creates the buffer for the battery so that when one dies, the other charge or the other takes over when one dies and then it'll start charging after it dies because the other one has taken over and blocked the pass through to the previous battery that was active. And then you have a Zor gate up here. Um, which controls the pass through and the reason that it's a Zor gate is just in case something in the circuit is broken Both of your batteries will not die like say you get raided and you have half of this set up somewhere else You don't have to wire this exactly like I do. This is just for tutorial purposes um, How I have it wired up in each room like this you can spread it out throughout the entire base if you would like to it's completely up to you but next I'll be wiring up the medium batteries and it's the same circuit the only thing different is we have medium batteries and uh, since they output more power we're going to need more power so you can either put more solar panels on your roof more root combiners or you can just go buy a wind turbine and throw that bitch up on your roof and then connect it to an extra root combiner which is what I did in this circuit but you can just keep adding more solar panels instead of wind turbines if you're not able to get those so I'll repeat that one more time. If you are not able to get wind turbines, use solar panels instead of wind turbines like how I'm using in the video, just for the video purpose. Um, and like I said earlier in the previous circuit on small batteries, you do not have to wire it in the same room like I do. It has to be wired correctly and the same way that I am wiring it but it does not have to all be in the same room. You can spread the components out if you would like to have your root combiners outside. That's totally up to you because if your root combiners are destroyed, the batteries will still work. The root combiners do not affect the batteries working, but the batteries will drain if they're not connected to the root combiners. So if you are new to electricity, I would recommend watching this video all the way through. If you're just here to learn the circuit, then you can skip ahead to whatever circuit you would like. But if you're a new player and you don't know much about electricity IRL or like and just in general you don't know what the fuck is happening, then just listen to what I'm saying while watching the video and then you can choose which circuit you would like to build later on once you understand what's happening. So the root combiner goes into the splitter, the splitters go into the input of the battery, and then um, that's how the batteries charge is from the splitter. The reason we're using a splitter is because it cuts the power directly in half regardless of the number that comes into it. If you, There's no other tool that does that. And you're not going to use the third splitter output for anything, otherwise it'll reduce the charge to the battery. The output of the batteries are going to go into the blocker, as you can see in the bottom right of the video. Now it's going to go into the electrical branch. For the second time, the right side of the electrical branch goes into the opposite blocker so that it block is, blocks the pass-through of 
the battery so that one can charge it while the other is off. If a battery is plugged into a blocker and it is being blocked, the battery can charge and no electrical output passes through. So that is why we do it like this. This is why it is correct. This is why you should do this because if one battery dies, the next battery will take over and the previous battery will charge, therefore giving you pretty much like an infinite power source as long as your power source, your solar panels, your wind turbines don't get destroyed. You could also, um, you know, like include a backup generator in this. So like if both batteries are dead and no power is coming through, then you could have a backup generator. Um, if you guys would like to see that included in this circuit um, and like maybe a part two to buffer batteries, having a backup generator for your, bu uh, for your buffer batteries, let me know in the comments below. Also make sure you like the video if you are learning something because this is quite complicated. So um, I would appreciate that. It allows YouTube to kind of push it up. I'm sure you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. But yeah, then um, for the large battery, the only difference is I took out all the solar panels and switched it to large batteries from medium batteries. Um, the wind turbines are pretty much what you're going to need at this point if you have two large batteries because otherwise you would have to spend way more high quality metal on solar panels to just keep up with the the power demand that your batteries have if, if you have large batteries they're outputting 100 power and if you're utilizing most of that power they're going to um, drain very quickly so uh, you know what I mean like if you have 450 power coming in from your solar panels and you've got four batteries hooked up that extra 50 power is going to allow the battery to charge while it's in use regardless of how much you know like like once you get into this point like if you don't know what you're doing with the electricity I don't recommend using these higher power circuits because you might end up just not figuring it out and if you don't know anything about rust electrical system and keeping up on patch notes or i guess um updates helps a lot um i mean that's how i learned how to do all this stuff i just kept up with what they were changing uh, i never really got into electricity because when they first released it it was absolute trash and was nothing like how it should have been everything wasn't working correctly like sometimes components didn't even work at all so that's why i've waited this long until they actually got their fucking shit together and created a proper electrical system that works how it should so if a battery is in use it can also be charged just like real life um, but in real life, it'll get to a point where the battery wears out, you know, but they don't, I'm sure they, um, will come out with something like that in the future. Once they realize the shitty error that they've made with their electrical system, how batteries never decay, meaning that people can just have permanent electricity, especially with this circuit. So this is pretty much a glitch until they fix it because batteries should decay over time. If something like this is being done, but uh, I would just consider this a glitch in the game until they fix it. So with this large circuit right here, you can see everything wired up correctly. It's the same as the previous two, nothing changed. Now we're going to get into the extra large one for you uh, big boys that like to sit at home all day and you know, I don't know what the fuck you do. But yeah, like if, if you're building this circuit, you need to chill the fuck out because this one's a little ridiculous amount of power. Uh, we basically doubled down on everything from the last circuit and now we have an output of two separate 100 power uh, units of power so if you look at the top right we have two zor gates on the on the very right of that circuit coming out from four different batteries there are two sets of two batteries and then each of them has their own output of 97 units because of course um, you have to pass the electricity through a couple units before it gets to the output uh, and then and then the case of this video it's three power for every circuit so for the small battery you get an output of seven for the medium you get an output of 47 for the large you get an output of 97 uh, because it has to pass through three components before the output is ready to be put to use for anything you know beyond the buffer battery uh, in this case you have 97 power coming out of one and then 97 power coming out of two so basically you got 200 power for this one if you require them to be split together or i'm not sure what the term is for that it combined together uh, there's no tool for that yet in the game uh, another reason why i've been waiting so long to do electrical circuits because it is illogical the way that they have it right now there's like so many components missing that they should have for an electrical system but I'm, I'm sure people are having fun with this and it's a good way to avoid the uh, brokenness of auto turrets because now they have to be wired up to power so i mean there's good and bad to it 
but so far um, I'm going to be releasing a couple more videos on electricity that you can expand off of the circuit so really this is just the power plug this is the extension cord this is whatever you want to call it um, if you don't have too much knowledge in the electrical world this is where you plug in auto turret to like you know like you can just send this straight to an auto turret and then you're good if you have um, if you just want the smaller one and just remember an auto turret needs 10 power to run so you would need at least the medium battery one for an auto turret uh, SAM turret you would also need at least the medium battery because SAM turrets require 25 power to run um, so if you're trying to run multiple of those that is why you would need these larger um, buffer batteries circuits so that you can have more power obviously um, so the large battery or this one would be this one would be good for like 10 auto turrets I haven't calculated it but in the future um, I'll be using this circuit probably in the future and um, I'll be sure to continue using circuits that I've only released in videos and I'll kind of like piece them together for you guys so it's easier to memorize easier to understand what the fuck is going on if you don't if you really don't care about learning it you just want to know the circuit you got me muted right now you're just wiring up the circuit like I am you know what I mean if you're, if you're someone like that I'm definitely going to just chunk it up for you you'll be able to piece it all together and you'll be good to go if you want uh, more in-depth tutorials on like how the fuck this shit works let me know in the comments below also let me know by liking this video and then i'll release some like tips and tricks videos instead of these wiring up circuit videos and then you'll be able to learn a whole lot more about how this works as a whole instead of just kind of you know guessing what the fuck i'm doing so if you would like to see tips and tricks videos leave a comment below and like the video if you would like to see more of um these kind of like jigsaw puzzle type tutorials for piecing together circuits also leave a comment below letting me know that you would like to see more tutorials on the circuit themselves um, so like the next one after this I'm gonna show how to incorporate these buffer batteries with lights and then the one after that I'm gonna show you how to incorporate it with SAM turrets and then auto turrets and then I'll do one with all of these together for a completed circuit because that is most likely what 99% of you are interested in is auto turrets and SAM turrets hooked up to electrical units so I'm sorry if I just confused the fucking shit out of most of you so if I did fucking spam like and then I'll, that'll let me know that I should be making tips and tricks videos uh, because I told you right now so we're both on the same thing if you like the video I'm gonna start making tips and tricks videos because you don't know what's going on if you do know what's going on do the same thing cuz I'm doing the same thing by making more of these videos so it's a win-win for both people involved I hope you guys enjoyed the video that was a whole fucking lot to say and um, more electricity videos coming soon I guess See you in the next one.